person's an asshole to me, like I'm going to lose everything. Absolutely. Well, you were also part of, you know, the three years you were there, you were there basically for the last fight between Kelly Dodd and Heather Dubrow, like the nail in the proverbial mm-hmm. coffin. Mm-hmm. Do you keep up on like, like I know you're recapping when you were on it on your YouTube. Do you keep up with like real world stuff that like Kelly and Heather? Kind of. Yeah, kind of. Why? What happened? Well, like the running, I mean, what hasn't happened? I mean, Kelly has her right. own Patreon podcast now with Rick Unmasked. You're welcome, Kelly. Right. I'm giving you a shout out here today. And, you know, she's uh-huh. also running into like Heather and Terry at Mastro's and like, you know, she's saying uh-huh. there they are and hold on. I'm not taking any sides. I hold oh. videos and then Heather saying oh, you're really, Googling. yeah, there's Kelly and, and Rick run into Terry and Heather in the OC more than it seems like others. I mean, I think Heather has said at times, like somehow they're finding her. Like, I'm just, this is all like, that's Some so dog. funny. Why is she taking videos? That's kind of weird. Well, she did, and then she posted it, and then Heather's like, I mean, what is this? And just, there's, look, there's well, no love loss. I mean, it almost feels like Kelly's taunting Heather when you describe it like that. Because, like, that's weird. Like, a grown woman doesn't take a picture, but, like, you know, video of another grown woman. Like, that's just weird. I mean, she was, and she was like, look who's here. So, I mean, that's not like, oh, there they are in the background. And wait, is that Heather? And it's like, you're calling attention. So I don't know. Do you think, what do you think it is between Heather and, I mean, you worked with both of them and Kelly that they are just like oil and water. Well, Kelly's crass and inappropriate and Heather's, Heather's refined and um, eloquent. So like that's oil and water right there. Those are literally complete antonyms. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And yes. There is this narrative out there too, that Heather, when she left after that season said she would never work with Kelly Dodd again, ever, you know, Heather's back on the OC, Kelly's gone, there was cast changes. Do you think that Heather coming back has something to do with Kelly leaving? Like, do you think Heather has said, like, I get rid of her, I'm not coming back? Probably. And it was probably time too. I'm sure it was like, you know, just timing. Um, but yeah, I would think so. Yeah. Um, cause like if I, I get not wanting to work with Kelly, she was really hard to work with and she was nasty. Um, so I could totally see Heather saying that. And then I could see the network being like, eh, her time's up anyway, or something like that. I mean, that's what I think happens. I think Heather has said that she didn't have anything to yeah. do with that, but I, and there's no shade to Heather because I think she's great, but. Well, she, I mean, Heather couldn't actually have anything to do with that. She probably just voiced her opinion, you know? Right. Like, it's not like, it's not like she's an executive producer and actually has the decision-making power, but like, it's not like we're working with fake characters. These are real people with real feelings and emotions. So like, you kind of have to take that into consideration if you're a producer. Totally. Who do you keep up with today from your time on the OC? I mean, it sounds like it's not uh, Nikki and it's not Kelly. I actually, I'm like, I'm not, I, I'm in touch with Kelly. I am in touch with Kelly. Um, and I don't think I've said anything that Kelly would be pissed off about, but who knows? Um, I might get a text later. Who knows? Um, so yeah, we're, Kelly and I talk on occasion, you know, we'll text here and there. And then, um, Heather and uh, Shannon a little bit and Tamara uh, a little Bronwyn a little Lizzie yeah that's a lot that's a lot considering that you don't live in the OC anymore yeah yeah that's a lot when you watch now yourself on the show would you have as you watch it back would you have done anything differently is there anything like you're seeing where you're like oh that's one thing i particularly regret or i feel like i should have like inserted myself in scenes more i because like i told you earlier i was totally just acting as if i would in like a normal social situation and I think probably as the seasons went on, I learned, you know, if, if you're going to get airtime, you kind of like got to, you know, talk more. And whereas before I just like ignore it, but I, I didn't really care though, as the seasons went on, cause I was like pregnant having babies and I was just distracted, but 
um yeah I would probably like be more involved and probably funnier or something more light people don't realize like when you get hired like that's it like there's no there's no handbook there's no like okay they just right. they're like today's your first day Megan and just go yeah. go let's see how you do to the wolves time to go yeah out of the nest you either sink or you swim yeah what about right you either sink or you swim what about you know there is no love loss between you and your ex Jim when these things are yeah. happening as like a public figure you know like he's like is it easier when like because listen there's you know all of that this is this and the sexting and the nanny and like is it easier yeah. like I know it sounds like it's not but then like do people make comments like hey like we're on your side like is it easier and comforting yeah. that people are there or is it like everyone knows my business this is horrible I wish I was a private person at the moment both it's both but um it's nice that like it's nice that I do, I feel like I do have public support um, because it's been, it was really hard and it still is really hard. So it's nice to have that public support, but it's also like, okay, like enough's enough. But I think like with a, with a narcissist, it's nice to feel like a little bit vindicated because I know that so many women are in relationships with narcissists and like, they feel so unseen because the narcissist is charming and charismatic and like, they, the woman might be alienated by their friend group based on like what the nurse lies, the narcissist has spread or whatever. And I can see how like women can feel trapped in, in that type of like role that they've been cast in. And I didn't have that because um, the way that every pl thing played out so publicly, like somebody dug his own grave. And if I think of a lot of narcissists were given that opportunity publicly, that's probably what would also happen. So I think that support has been like, given me a lot of confidence to kind of start over on my own and move beyond that. And you think that's like, if it's a, if a narcissist is in public, like what eventually it will come out? Yes, or? I think it's pretty, I think it's easy to, easier to spot a narcissist in a public conflict. Like if there's a public conflict happening, I think it's pretty easy to spot the narcissist. Like Kanye and Kim, for instance, you know, like, hello, that's not impossible to see who's a narcissist there. And then like, um, like Lala Kent is going through it with her ex Randall. Like that's pretty clear to see, like he's a narcissist and so situations like that. Right. So like Kanye and like Randall, like what characteristics would one look for? Because I have a friend, her name is Vanessa Riser. She dated Teresa's boyfriend.